Since I did anything to the car, I've really been having it sit outside, trying to let the clear harden up before I cut and buff it. But while I'm still letting it harden up, I might as well go ahead and do this dash. I'm going to fiberglass it because it got, it's in pretty good shape though, for real. Got a couple of cracks over there, but I'm going to fiberglass and we're going to change the color of it. So, I guess the first thing to do is take it out. Let me pull it outside and we'll take this dash out. I'm getting it. It's taking me a while. It's like a puzzle. Trying to unhook all this stuff. It ain't like no box shipping dash. But just a top pad. You gotta take out a whole lot more. But I think I got everything loose now. So I just gotta pull it out. Finally got it out. I'm going to take you on the inside. I don't tuck them on the inside. I actually got three different dashes. I got two I got to do, but one was just an extra one. All right, this is what I got. This the dash that just came out of it. And this the extra one Southern Chevy TV brought up. This the one he wanted me to do because I wasn't going to take that one out, but I'd rather take it out then install it so I can test fit it. But this one here, it's actually the glove box. It's cracked up right here. Let me turn it up. You can see it right there. It's cracked, so I'll probably use this one here. Because I ain't got to worry about fixing it. The top, it's in worse shape than that one over there, but. I'm going to fiberglass it anyway, so I think I'm going to go with this one. This here is Swag Dash. I was going to do two at a time, but I'm not. I'm just going to do one at a time. Two time consuming. But we're going to get everything up on the table and come up with a game plan. Well, before I do anything, I'm going to take this outside and clean it up. I'm going to have to swap some stuff over. Like the brake release. Also this piece here. I'm going to have to swap it over. But I need to clean it up first because it got a lot of dust and dirt on it. It's not going to stick with that on it. I done cleaned it up and brought it back on the inside. Now I got to come up with a game plan for us, my vents and my speakers. What I got here, I just got some cardboard. I'm just going to start drawing out some designs from the cardboard. And once I draw out what I'm looking for, I cut it out on some MDF. But let me come up with something right quick. This is just a rough draft. I know it look crazy right now, but it'll all come together shortly. I'm just freehanding everything right now. It's going to be for the vent. I just got to make two of them, one for the other side. These are going to be open. And this for the speaker. It's going to be 
be something like that. But it'll come together once I cut it out. Then put it on a piece of MDF. Thanks, cut out in cardboard. It's going to be something like that. I can use this same cutout on this side. I just got to turn it around that way. So what we need to do now, got me some MDF here. We're going to transfer our design over to the wood. Let me take it outside. Look at it. Designs transferred over to the wood. The MDF. Now I got to go back and cut the inside out. Like I did this one here. The reason why I haven't cut the outer out yet. Because I need something to hold on to. When I start using the router. Because it's a lot safer than trying to hold on to this smaller piece. And once I do the inside, wrap the inside out, I'll go back and cut the outer out. Same way with these pieces. And I'm going to save this inside piece here because I'm going to press some grills on. And I need this piece here to press the grill. But you'll see once I get going some more. There you have it. Everything cut out. I also went back and took me... I got a paint stir and some sandpaper on it. Kind of clean it up a little bit from the uh, jigsaw, the jagged edges. Now, before I do any routing, I'm going to put my, I got some spick and mix here. I'm going to press the grills in place on these two pieces here. I forgot before I press the grill on, I'm gonna put a round over on these pieces here. The pieces that sit inside, the piece that pressed it on. I'm gonna put a quarter inch round over on it. I kind of set it too deep because I didn't want that little lip up here. But it really don't matter because it's not gonna transfer into the grill once I press it. pressing it on which if I was doing this like every day I would have a press but I don't I just got two hopper freight clamps and I cut two pieces of wood about the size of the wood that that I'm using and the grill and I just keep on tightening it down but you're gonna have to transfer the clamps over like on this side because it ain't pressed so I'm gonna remove this clamp here and put it on this side and bring it on down it should be good to go see I got it pretty much pressed down all the way around now we'll remove these clamps and see what we got you can see how it pushed this piece of wood down inside of there let's flip it over Well, you can see what I'm talking about. You got to re remove the pieces. Can't do it with one hand, but there you go. But you can see how the uh, concept. It's just stuck down up in there. Let me take this wood out, then I'll cut you back on. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a... Edge around here. I'm not sure what bit I'm gonna use. I'm not sure. I might use this cold, this quarter inch cold. But I'm gonna put some kind of design around there. It'll bring it on out. But let me press this other now, and then we'll go ahead and do that. All right. Got it routed. I gotta finish them corners up. I'm gonna round them off. I'm just going to use some body filler because it's square on the inside. But other than that, I like the way it's going. And on these here, going to be like that there. 
once I cut the out out it'll shape on up but I'm gonna go get um, this is a quarter inch here I'm gonna go get probably some three quarter of an inch I'm gonna make another drop down around the edge just on the uh, well I'm gonna do it on all of it but I think I'm gonna call it a night start back off fresh in the morning Made it back from Home Depot. Got my three quarter of an inch MDF. Now what we need to do, we need to go ahead and cut the outer edge out. We're gonna try to make a nice precise cut with the jigsaw. Got the outer edges cut out on all four pieces. I also took some dolphin glaze and put in my corners here. Trying to round them off some. But next we're going to cut out three quarters of an inch and be a five. So we just want this edge here. Going to be somewhat long now. So we're going to flip this over and trace it out. On all pieces. Now what we'll do, we'll cut the inside of these out. Which I had marked it right. It's gonna be the left, this is gonna be the right, it's gonna be the left. Like this one going here. But it's gonna be something like that there. And I'm gonna put a round over around the edge of the three quarter inch board. So let me separate all four of them, then I'll put that round over. Find my round over a bit. Did the round over. It's coming together now. Let me show you what it's looking like. Now I separate all my four pieces. I'll probably cut it somewhere along now. I just freehand some around the outer edge because it ain't got to be straight because once I fiberglass it, I'm going to fill the edge all that in. So let me cut it out. There you have it. Now I got to make a bottom, a base for the speakers. I'm just going to use these speakers as a reference. I'm pretty sure you're going to change them. But I'm going to uh, countersink them by using two pieces of board. I could use the router with a circular uh, jig, but uh, it's quicker just using the jig. So plus it's going to be covered up so it don't matter if the uh, hole or the circle is perfect so I'm just going to use the jig so let me give you an idea of what I'm doing see I traced the outer edge of the speaker so I'm going to cut that out then I'm going to make another one but I'm going to trace the inner portion so it'll be countersunk somewhat so when I put this in this won't be hitting up against it and this that so I'm going to trace this out also I'm gonna make two of these. Two of these for each each speaker. What I'm doing, so I made two pieces so the speaker be kind of sunk. Then this going on top of that. Then this on top of that. Put the speaker in this. Let me finish up making the other one, then we'll move on. Speaker grills done. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the vents. I'm just going to trace out around the outer edge. I just need something to hold this in place. When I put it up in there, then I cut out the middle part. I'm just going to have a lip just to hold this. So I'm going to cut this inner section out. Then I have something to hold that in place. 
finished up with that. Now I'm going to take some one part glazing putty and fill these chips up. Even though it's going to be covered up with the speaker and the grill, I'm still going to fill them up. Plus I got to trim my grill. I'm just going to cut along around here. Trim it up. Then I'll be ready to start gluing all the stuff together. Now I take me some wood glue and glue everything together. See, this is going to be the bottom piece. It's going to go on top of that. Kind of sink the speaker. And it's going on top of that. And the vent is going to be like this. Also trim the speaker mesh. It's the wrong way. Actually, this one. All my pieces glued. Now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna sit these pieces up in my existing dash because I'm gonna have to cut out a lot of it, and I'm trying to make sure everything clear. I think I'm gonna have to trim this front part here down some, and maybe this back. I think these will be fine. Let me trim these down. Then I probably just cut this out here and see will it just sit down up in there without hitting anything. I got this side here cut out. Still got to do this side. But I had to cut into some of the foam here. It didn't change nothing up down here but I had to cut in the top section here and here's my piece I done put them together I used some uh, body filler at the top and I used some fiberglass filler at the bottom but it's gonna go in here somewhat like this now I'm gonna go back in I'm gonna put like a, a countersink edge here so when I staple the fleece on It'll be kind of some. It won't sit flush up with the surface here. Then I can just feather the edge everything. I'm going to use the router to do that. Let me go ahead and do that. Then I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how I got that lip there? That's what I'm going to staple the fleece on to. That's to keep me from bringing the fleece all the way up to here. I can just feather the edge from here back. finished up cutting out this side I had to cut into this part that's where the gauge cluster slide into but I can repair that ain't no big deal then this here snap but I got my piece it's drying I put my fiberglass fill on it I'm waiting on it to dry then I sand the top down like I did this here while I'm letting that dry, I'm just knocking down all my high areas, like right here, where the crack's at. It looked like somebody tried to repair it, so I'm just knocking all this down. Getting rid of it, because when you put the fleece on, you want a, a flat surface. You don't want nothing sticking up. On this back section, I'm cutting that off, because it ain't going to do nothing but interfere with your uh, fleece or whatever you're trying to lay flat so just cut that lip off and be done with it okay I got that trim I also took some 80 grit I think it was 80 but I just knocked the edges down the rough edges down now before I move any further I'm gonna take it outside and make sure everything clear before I sit everything in place Let's go ahead and do that. Everything's looking good, except I think my piece of wood hitting right here, and maybe up in here somewhere. So what I'm gonna do, 
I'm gonna angle this area here off. See where I got the pin line at. And right here, I'm just gonna clean it out. Maybe take one piece of wood off with my rattle. Same way on that side. See how I built this edge off? I just did it with the jigsaw. And I cleaned this out with the rattle. Let me set them up here. See what it looked like. Got everything to clear now. Now it's time to set the pieces in place. I forgot to mention I had marked my two areas where the screws need to go through. To hold the top of the dash in place. So when I drill my holes, you're not gonna be able to see the holes or the screws because the bent cover's go. It's gonna be covering them up. Okay, on this top section here, I'll be using some spray foam just to seal the cracks that hold it in place. Once it dry, I flip it over and I put some fiberglass filler on the back side to keep it sturdy. This is the spray foam I'm gonna use here. Just touch the seal. Once this spray foam dry, I trim it up. Then I flip it over and do the back side. I don't really like the way this grid is sitting just on the back side of this wood. I'm going to use my rabbiting bit and I'm going to trim out the inside of here. Then I'll be able to set my grid flush with the wood. Because it's actually. See, that's in flush there. So I'm going to trim out inside of that so I can get it flush. Alright, got that taken care of. Now I got to trim my mesh out. I already um, traced out where I need to trim it out on this one. The red line. You see how it's sitting flush with the wood now? Flip it over. Got it trimmed up. Now we're going to jump back over here on this dash. Spray foam dry, but I haven't trimmed it yet. We're going to support the back side with fiberglass filler. Bundle glass. We're just gonna put some in maybe some corners, put some right here, right here, here, there, maybe there, maybe in the middle. Just a glob. They ain't gotta be perfect because you'll never see it. See my fiberglass filler down. Like I said, it ain't gotta be pretty. Just trying to brace it up. Now I gotta form this lip here back up because it broke off because I had got too close to the edge. I'm just going to put some fiberglass filler there. On both sides. I'm going to fill this with fiberglass filler also. Where I had to cut with a gauge cluster slide into. I'm going to fill this in. It's going to be covered up also, but I just want to keep that shape. After I had put the fiberglass filler, I came back with some body filler. Then I came back with some glaze and put it. Let's move it on out. But I still got to do a little bit more sanding. But we'll do that once we start fiberglassing it. I guess now it's time for some fleece. So we'll flip it over and get started. Before I move on with the fleece, I'm going to jump over here and fabricate this metal piece. This piece here goes on there like that. It's for the vents. Two vents there and a vent there. I probably make this just one vent, a bigger vent, combine the both of them. It's just gonna be a single vent. Then I also got some plexiglass glass. I'm gonna put in there. I'm gonna put it in the middle here. So I'm gonna have to cut this out some, cut it down some, and come up with a design for my vents. I might just keep them square. Just simple, classic look. 
So let me get that started. I'm going to use this quarter inch MDF for my base. Here's my cutouts. I made them in three different sections because this piece here is actually not flat. Let me see if I can show it to you. But this piece here gonna have to be flat because the plexiglass is flat. And let me show you what I'm gonna have to do. I'm just gonna burn all three together. I still got some shaping up I gotta do. But you probably can get the idea what I'm going for. I'm gonna cut this section here out so I can install the place of glass on the back side. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start cutting this out. Then I'm gonna have to shape the ends up. Then I have fiberglass all three together. I got it where I need it to be for now. I use fiberglass filler to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna take it outside and sand the back of it down, also the front. Then I go back and fiberglass it together. Finished up with the fiberglass. Now it's all one piece. You can see I put fiberglass here and here. Also on the ends and the back. The back still kind of, it ain't fully dry, but it's dry to the touch. Now you can see how that curve is. It's the original. Let me put it up here. I still got some shaping to do. I'm finna sand this fiberglass down. Then I come back with some filler. Let's move it on out. Alright, I finished up with this piece. I done sand the body filler down. It's ready for some primer. I also boxed this backside in for my plexiglass and my LEDs. Side by side comparison. Now I'm ready to put my fleece on. When I put my fleece on, I screw this down to hold everything in place until I fiberglass it. Let me get set up for my fleece, then I cut it back on. I cut my fleece to size. On each end, it's not enough to cover. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it right down the middle here because I don't need. Nine in the middle, as you can see. Also with this glue box set, I'm going to cut it down the middle. And that'll give me enough wiggle room so I can stretch it. See how I got that relief cut? Now I get ready to lay it down. I'm going to be using this Loctite. I'm going to start at the top, so I'm going to flip it back over. And I'm going to work my way down towards the bottom. Now we'll start spraying the adhesive down. You want to start in the middle so I think this will be a good area to start. Then I'm going to pull this, I'm going to glue this area here down. Then I'll pull the fleece, stretch it so I have enough to cover this side here.
Here is the fleece. I got the ends overlap on the back side. And some spots I had to cut, like right here. So I can stretch it that way to keep the wrinkles out. And also here. Now I take this piece here, it's the middle piece. I wrapped it in uh, tape. So when I put the resin on, it don't stick to it. I'm gonna have to cut this out so it'll sit down right. And I mount this down. Here is that. So I want to keep that shape. So this will hold a uh, fleece where it needs to be. It'll match up with the middle piece that I made. Once I start fiberglassing. Now I'm going to take my staple gun here. Got some cord ends and staples. And I'm going to staple around all my areas that I don't want to come up. Because the resin it interact with the glue and it'll start lifting in spots like this. So I'm going to staple around there. Also, around here where I made that cove at on the wood, I'm going to put staples there. Up in here. There goes the staples. Some of the staples ain't holding because the dash was so brittle and cracked up. But I think it'll be alright. Because a lot of times that'll lift up on you if you ain't got nothing to hold it down. You can use some CA glue also to hold it down. And I put some tape around this top section here. To keep that form now because this bezel here goes on it now we'll put our resin down we're going to be using this bundle fiberglass resin chip brush got my gloves and a cup I just need to get a stick we'll mix some up and start brushing it on fiberglass resin plot I'm gonna let this here dry then I'm gonna come back and put another coat on top of this strengthen it up I'm applying another coat of resin 
some of my spots look like it was trying to come up that's why you see this masking tape here so I can keep that shape right here it was trying to come up so I had put some tape on it rigged up something to keep that shape into the resin dry up Here's what it looked like after the resin dried. Now I take my DA over here. Got some 80 grit on it. And I knock this down. Some more get it smooth. So I can lay my fiberglass mat. Because if I put it on top of this, it'll leave a lot of air pockets. So I'm going to smooth this down. I'm also going to take this middle piece out before I start sanding. What I did, I just ran my box cutter along my edge just to cut that seal from the masking tape and the uh, fleece itself. Then it'll just pull on up. what it look like after the knockdown with the 80 grit. I'm going to go back and take some fiberglass filler, some Duraglass. There's some spots like right here. I'm going to wipe before I put some uh, fiberglass mat on it. Try to smooth that on out. It's another area here. Also right here where I cut it. I kind of cut it too deep so I'm going to form this shape back up. Probably white foam around here. We'll let this dry here. Then we'll sand it down. Then we'll move on. Here we go. We got that done. Now we'll start doing the fiberglass. We're going to be using this fiberglass mat by Bundo. We're going to cut it to size. And I'll probably do this top part first, then flip it over and do the other side. So let me cut. I guess I'm gonna cut all this. I'm gonna try to use whole pieces where I can. Here's this top section cut out. We're gonna be using the same brush, the chip brush, the same resin. We're just gonna dab it. First, we're gonna brush some up under the uh, mat. Then we're gonna lay the mat. Then we're gonna start dabbing the mat, dabbing it in place.
just the top section here. The reason why you see that red marking, because I had used a sharpie to cut this section here out when I had traced it. It was easy to cut out like that. Completely fiberglass. Now I take my DA and knock this down, same way I did with just a uh, resin. I'm gonna use 80 grit. Sand it down with the 80 grit on the DA. No hand sanding up to this point. All machine. Now I cut out my fleece out. Around here. Also I cut out around this section here for my bezel to go. And I'll be using these combination of tools. Here's all my access fleece cut out. Let me flip it over. Show you the top side. Okay, here's the top side. I'm going to take my DA and knock it on down. Make that transition a lot smoother. Because I did this with a knife. So I'm going to take my sandpaper and knock it down some. Once I had cut the fleece up here. I came back with some resin to put on top of it because the fleece was still soft. That resin will harden it up. It'll make it a lot easier to sand. That's why you see those dark spots on the wood. But I got to sand it down now. And now I'm going to take some fiberglass filler, some Duraglass. And I'm going to feather edge all my edges here. Like right here where I cut. I'm just going to take my finger, wipe some around all the edges. glass filler I let this dry then I sand it down with some 80 grit shape it up some then I'll be ready for my next step it's a big mess out here now I just finished sanding all the uh, fiberglass filler got all that taken care of I went back and hit this because I had some left over. Now we're going to take some regular body filler and we're going to put a skim coat over everything. The whole dash. We're going to be using this USC AG47 lightweight grip filler. Finish wiping the filler on. Now I sand this down with 80 grit on the DA. I'm just finishing up sanding by machine and by hand. I did all this with the DA, no blocking yet. I actually done it with 45 grit. I didn't use 80 grit because it was a lot faster cutting it down. But now I'm finna I'm finna go to 80 grit now, but I'm gonna spray some guide coat on it first. It's gonna help me find all my low areas. Then I'll take my block with some 80 grit on it and block it down.
got the guide coat applied. Now it's time to start blocking. I got my different size blocks here. But mine is going to be using this one. I got some 180 on it. Pretty much the same as one, well, 150. It's pretty much the same as 180. You just need to go on the X pattern back and forth to remove the guide coat. It's going to show us all our low areas. You can see it's still low. It's not going to take much to bring it down. Let me keep going. Okay, this is what we got. You can see this area here. It was a lot lower than the rest of this pretty much smooth here. But I need to bring this down more to remove the guide coat. Level it on out. And I'm also going to be blocking this some more because I'm going to prime this as well. But I think I'm going to paint this black. Not the orange that the dash going. And I'm going to put an orange pin stripe at the bottom of it and also at the top. Like the original one here. Okay, I got all the blocking down. I got a few pin holes here and there. I'm going to go back with some one part glaze and put it and fill those before I start priming it. glaze and put it apart. I'll let this dry. Then I'll sign that down. Then I'll be ready for some primer. A piece of stage stuff to be primed. Before I prime this here, I'm going to spray some sign free adhesion promoter just on my areas where the bound at. Make sure that primer stick to it because I'm going to have some overspray on it. Here's the high bill primer. Now I gotta block this down. But before I block it, I'm gonna put some one part glazing put it on my imperfections, my pinholes that I find. Then once I do that, I spray some guide coat. Then we'll block this down. One part glazing put it apply. Like I said, I'm going to spray some guide coat over this here. I'm also going to spray this piece. But this piece here going black. But I'm going to put some guide coat on it. And I got to clean these pieces here up. They go in the color of the dash. And I'm going to scuff these up with a maroon scotch spray. So let's spray this guide coat. Here's the maroon scotch break. 
I'm just going to be stuffing it up. Very simple. The blocking is going to be done just like we done earlier before we primed it, going in the X pattern and removing the gag coat. I'm finished sanding. Now I'm working on my nail magnets. I had to drill some holes where the magnet's gonna be. And once I drilled the holes, I came back with some self fitting primer just to seal it up. This was gonna hold everything in place, such as the speaker grill and a defrost vent. So we're gonna let that dry, then we're gonna go with an orange sealer. It's somewhat the same color as the color I'm going with. It's just to keep from using so much color. Before I paint the dash, I'm gonna paint this insert piece here that go above the glove box. It's going a different color, set in black. It's like your cam. So I'm gonna paint this first and let it dry. Be drying while I'm painting the dash. I had wet sanded this top part, not the bottom because it's not gonna be seen. But I'm still gonna paint this black at the bottom up. And the reason why I wet sanded this is because it's not gonna have no text on it. So I was trying to get it somewhat smooth. So let me mix up this sand black and we'll get the spraying. Here's the dash, I'm ready to spray it now. Before I put the color on it, I'm gonna spray the texture. I'm gonna be using this bed liner material, if I can find it. Got a can here, it's clear. I'm gonna lightly mist it on, on the dash also, on the top section of these. I'm not gonna spray the bottom. This is the cover to go onto the piece that I got the plexiglass going into. I'm going to spray that orange also, just on one side. texture apply it. Now, before I spray my sealer, I'm going to spray some sand free adhesion promoter just on the plastic pieces. Here's the sealer. It's by Yuri Kim also.
There's two coats of Scylla. We're gonna get ready to spray the color. It's ready to spray. Don't gotta be reduced. Let me take your view where is it? It's the Inferno Orange. It's a Camara interior color. Here's the results. I'm gonna let it start here overnight and let it dry on up before I start handling it. I gotta put a lot of pieces on, such as the bezel, the glove box, the insert that I made. Get it over here. I gotta put the plexiglass in here that Rich made, and the grills. I spray painted the lock. Still wet. I didn't put the actual color on this piece here because it's going to be behind that plate glass. You might be tell the difference of the color. Here's the following morning. Everything good and dry. And we'll start putting it back together. First, we're going to put these speaking mesh grids in. And what I'm going to do to attach these, I'm going to use some fiberglass filler. Just going to mix up some. Just put maybe a spot on each corner. I'm going to do the same way with these magnets. I'm going to sand the back of them. Put some sandpaper, probably some 180 grit. Then I just put it down in here, put some body filler down in there. Hold it in place. 
magnets installed. Also the mesh grill. Then we'll jump to this plexiglass and the LEDs. Place the glass and stop. I just dropped it in place, came back with some hot glue, put some on each side, then I came back with some popsicle sticks, cut them to size, and glued them on each end. And these LEDs, it got some self adhesive tape on the back, but it don't stick real good, so I put some hot glue to hold it in place to be on the safe side. Then I drilled me some holes, these two holes here, just to screw it down, and these two to fish the wires through. So let me fish the wires through. Then I screw it down. Then we'll, I guess we'll mount it in place. I got these to mount it to the dash. Before I mount this here, I got some pinch type I'm gonna put on here at the top and the bottom. Also here, it was red pinch type originally. But I got some orange here. We're gonna put that on there. Somewhat match this.
the stuff.